Alright guys, uh, I'm still sick. I'm not sure if you guys can tell from my voice, but let's try and eat some of this medicine and hopefully I'll get better, you know. Oh my god, my voice sounds awful. Yeah. Two hours later. Oh my god, I feel much better now. Hey, what is up guys? Guitar Rock here. Welcome back to another Brown Dust video. Alright, today's guide would be about the Warriors 4 star specifically on who to pick as a beginner, intermediate or advanced player. Alright, we're gonna jump into this in-depth guide. But first, a quick message from the sponsor. Alright, so this video is sponsored by BeautifulHello.com. It's an awesome website that have awesome variety of beautifully designed clothing. If you're looking yourself to buy some sweatshirts, some hoodies, use my referral link. Uh, it will be in the description below. Alright, don't worry about shipping. It's free, available worldwide. Yeah, make sure to insert the relevant codes as well so that you'll get some discounts off. Alright, so let's jump onto the video. Alright, so make sure to log in today to get all of these premium scrolls, soul stones, diamonds, and a bunch of free stuff. Okay, so first things first, uh, we're gonna try to look at this all of the mercenaries right here from a couple of different perspectives because that's what we do in this channel. Alright, so I will give my in-depth analysis and usually I will favor the newer players and I will tell them, hey, if you're new, pick this, pick this, pick this. Alright, so that's how it's gonna be most of the time. But today, today, we're gonna do something a little bit different, all right? Bear with me a bit. It's just a little bit different. Okay, so this is probably the toughest list of all to recommend because all of the other four stars is kind of obvious. But for this one, four star warriors, I would say this is probably the trickiest one. And I'm gonna straight up say this, right? Just for all the veteran players out there. For me personally, as a veteran player, for someone that's been playing the game for more than one year, I practically have every single mercenaries on this list rank up, awaken, some of them are 5 stars still, some of them are 6 stars, but most of them are rank up and awaken, and they are at least plus 8, plus 9, or plus 10. Okay, so as a veteran player, in my regular PvP, I don't really use any of these units. Alright, so my PvP team consists of either 5 stars or legendaries. So I just want to get that straight. Alright, if you are new, you might be using some legendary, some 5 stars, and you might mix in some 4 stars as well because you're new to the game, you might not have enough resources to awaken a bunch, and definitely a 4 star plus 9 is going to outperform a 5 star at plus 0 or whatever, so you might not have enough skill books whatsoever. So ideally, as a veteran player myself, I don't use any of these 4 stars on this list in my regular PvP arena. I do use them on Novice though, but not the regular arena. The unit that I use the most on this list is none other than Lian. Alright, so Lian is like the go-to to pick if you're a veteran player, you've been playing the game for a while, and you practically own most of these warriors already, you should go for Lian. Now's the time to go for Lian. I feel like it's a, like maybe I'm biased. Maybe I'm biased. I feel like Lian shouldn't be compared to any other mercenaries on this list right here. Like seriously, Lian is just he is like a legendary compared to every single unit on this list. I'm not even joking. Like his kit is just legendary. It's out of this world. There's no one that can replace him in what he is doing. Uh, at least not yet at the time of me recording this video. Maybe in the future there will be some mercenaries that can perform similar things. Alright, so Lian is the go-to to pick. Alright, if you are someone who has been playing the game for 6 months, 7 months, 8 months, and you're looking to currently focusing in your Guild Wars and Underground Arena skills, having Lian is going to be is going to make your life a breeze. Let's just say that Lian is the perfect sized screwdriver that you're gonna use most of the time. Alright, you probably sometimes you might need a smaller size one, sometimes you're gonna need a bigger size one, but he's just the perfect fit that can fulfill your needs 80 to 90% of the time as a veteran player. Alright, so I just want to get that out of the way. Alright, I'm favoring the veteran players first. Alright, so now to the beginners. So, should you pick Lian if you are new to the game? No, definitely no. The reason why is Lian is not really an arena or novice arena unit. Alright, if you pick Lian, 
is going to be for every other content in the game. So Leon excels in campaign for sure. He he's usable in Arena and Novice for sure, but he's just not like extraordinarily strong there uh, compared to something like a Corret, for example. Lian is very good in Underground Arena and Guild Wars. I think I've done a video on it before, I'm not too sure, but hopefully I'll cover it again next time because uh, most players don't really know how strong he is. Like, he counters Belioff like, just like that, with a flick of a finger. He just counters Belioff, skeletons form, no problem, he will take care of the skeletons as well. Uh, it's just insane, right? So his power is cannot be replaced right here in this list. So Lian is more setup dependent compared to everyone else on this list and you need decent supporters to use him well all right so for beginners like if you want something that can help you tackle campaign stages and perhaps cover novice and pvp as well i think Corret is going to be the much better pick all right so i'm going to recommend Corret if you're new to the game if you just started definitely go for Corret. all right so hell and Corret are going to be your go-to in covering the campaign and trying to tackle all these stages easy hard normal whatever you're gonna be able to do them with a breeze now if you're if you have been playing the game for a while maybe you have fused someone known as gunter should you still pick Corret though uh, i would say it depends ideally yes because despite having gunter at plus zero most likely that's the case hopefully you didn't skill up your gunter Corret plus nine is going to basically outperform gunter most of the time because if you pair Corret with Michaela, all right, so let, let's go ahead and have a look at Corret's skill sets. If you guys are not familiar, boom. All right, so Corret has this skill right here, which will deal additional damage if her HP is below 99%. So if you pair a Corret with Michaela, uh, she basically is going to outperform and out damage a Gunter at plus zero. So there's no denying it. If you already intent on picking Michaela as a supporter, Corret is going to be the much better option to go to most of the time compared to a Gunter. Alright, so for beginners, I would say Corret, she's gonna help you with all the areas. Corret is good in Novice as well, so she's gonna be much more versatile right there. Gunter, sure, you can use Gunter in campaign and PvP, but what about in Novice, right? So in Novice, Corret is really good. I would say he's like the top 5 warriors, uh, besides Cry and a few others, but Corret is definitely the top warriors right there, top few warriors. So in PvP, Corret is still usable, like I mentioned, pair her with Michaela, and you're gonna see a much more higher damage output. And in terms of campaign, same goes for there as well. Alright, so let's jump back to the start, we're gonna cover the most left mercenary. Alright, Kana. Okay, so let's have a look at Kana, and I'm gonna tell you guys what's, what her main problem is right now. Like, this is freaking annoying, it's freaking annoying. I want Kana to be good, but she's just not good. She's just bad. In Novice Arena, the problem with Kana's kit is, look at this. She deals bonus damage to defenders. Alright, so let's just jump to a plus 10. Whoa, 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 I'm not going to skill her up. Look, bonus damage to defenders, 275%. Alright, so bonus damage to warriors, 150%. No problem. So this range, ideally in PvP, in Novice or whatever, you have two options. Either you have an initiator, someone that goes first, and then you have a backline attacker or a tank killer, which is something like Cry's role. Uh, basically, Cry will move later and eliminate the taunters. Kana is one of those, because Kana, if you make her go first, she most likely will get stuck at Serendia, because I've tried her before, bonus damage to defenders, bonus damage to warriors, she gets stuck at Serendia, she cannot one-shot Serendia most of the time. So you will get stuck right there, wasting your time and if you make her go later there's just no point because cry is better at what uh he's doing you know cry can pillage buffs and can guarantee that one shot kana has that inconsistency sure she has good tile range but most of the time uh being very front right here even if it's a cross tile that's not going to benefit much for her all right she needs this she needs this to be a skip like if this is a skip like anastasia one yes she can be a good initiator but with it being very front, it's like, uh, 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 don't go for it. Don't go for it. Don't go for Kana. I know she's waifu, but do not go for her. You will not see a scenario or a situation where she will be used much. Hopefully, she will get a plus 15, which will reward her skills or whatever. Okay, so next up, we have Yunrang. Yunrang is a unique one, right? So, a lot of players, this 
might not be something that global and EU players are aware of, but Yunrang used to be like an Asia server thing. So I think most Asia players who have been playing the game since the beginning will have an Yunrang build up. So that was before Lito was reworked. Yes, I know, like most players don't really know that. If you are from global or EU, Lito used to be bad, like really bad. Then they rework him, give him Ignore Taunt, then he's like, eh, slightly better. I mean like, not slightly better, but five times better literally. So Lito is like the, the reincarnation or a better version of Yunrang most of the time because Ignore Taunt and can guarantee that one shot. Yunrang will have that inconsistency, all right? If you have tried to do Guild Wars, someone put a Livia at the back, Lito can one-shot the Livia, no problem, with good buffs. Yunrang is going to struggle. Sure, she has that extra Tal, but most of the time that's not going to help you much. You want to secure the kill, so Lito is going to be better most of the time. I would not recommend picking Yunrang at all, unless you're looking for maybe a solid Guild Wars contender that can help you uh, in your assets, you know, in deploying, sometimes trying to counter backline warriors and things like that, but still, I still think Lito is a better one to go for. Obviously, you can't pick Lito from this list, but since Lito exists and he's a fusion mercenary, I think most players should be able to do, uh, should be able to build a Lito. Plus, you don't really need to waste your skill books on Lito anyway. All right, next up is Lian. So I still stand by what I say. Why Lian is the best warrior on this list? All right. So. I have a couple of reasons. Number one, Lian is very good in Guild Wars and the Underground Arena. He is usable in the PvP and the Novice, although not recommended, but he's, he can be used right there. The reason why he's not recommended is because he suicides and he dies, so he will only be able to move one time, alright? Remember earlier in this video, remember I mentioned something about Lian being OP, why no one in this list deserve to be compared to him, alright? So Lian can do something that no one else can. And yes, I know, I know you learn something every day. You learn something every day thanks to me, right? I'm your professional teacher right here. All right, you should thank me later or just leave comments below and thank me. Okay, so here's the thing. Lian has an x tal range. Zoop, x tal x tal So what's so special about his x tal That's the thing. Nobody knows what's so special about him. I'll give you guys five seconds to figure out. What's so special about Lian's x -tal? Like, Taylor has x -tal range, you know? Taylor? Ha! <laughs> Taylor? Like, who else has x -tal range? Yuri! <laughs> Yuri, lol. Any of you using Yuri now? No? Alright, good. Don't use her. Alright, uh, who else has x -tal? Who has x -tal? Gunter, Pork. Gunter actually good, alright. Korat. Right, you get the picture, right? Arch. Boom, x -tal. And lastly, we have Octavia, x -tal as well. Alright, in case you guys are wondering, what makes Lian's x -tal range so unique? Alright, so Lian's x -tal range hits far rare. He hits the most back. Yes, do you guys figure it out though? Do you guys figure it out? No? Ah, too bad. Try again next time. It's okay. It's okay. Sometimes, you know, this is the thing, the small little things that we overlook. So why is this so good? Why is this so good? He can do something that no one else in the game can. Alright? So keep that in mind. In Guild Wars, in Underground Arena, you cannot, you can't use a Corret to try to get rid of backline attackers. So imagine if that particular row, there are three units, right? There are three units. The most front is a Lucius. The middle is a Cecilia. The most back uh, is the one that you want to get rid of. You can use Lian for that scenario. Like for most cases, sure, sometimes you can use Corret, right? Sometimes you have to try to get rid of the front so that you can jump to the back to skip. It's a bit complicated, but Lian can do something that no one else does in the game. Like literally when the time of me recording this video, Lian is the only one that has the x tar range and hits the far back. Which is why in a lot of scenarios in campaign stages, in a lot of scenario in the Evil Castle, in Guild Wars specifically. In Guild Wars, all the way at the back, there will be something alongside that Belliaf buffs, and you want to go there. So going in with Corret does not make sense. Lian will help take care of that. He will make your life easy. 
Like, you're gonna regret looking down on him. I'm serious. He's that good. So that's my reasoning. It might not be a valid one to you guys until you try it out, until you try to play Guild Wars for a bit, which is why for veteran players, I think this is something that only veteran players is gonna understand. If you're new to the game, probably you'll be like, oh, what's so special about this tile range? I mean like, okay, cool. Like, but if you are a veteran player, you've been playing the game and you're all like me, so you know, you know that is something that's very rare, that's that specific formation that in the underground arena, in that tournament, he's gonna be able to carry you. Okay, so let me do a quick jump to Ouch. Alright, so I wanna talk about Ouch a little bit. So Ouch used to be really, really strong, right? Remember Ouch? Remember this girl? Yeah, she has the large hammer. No one remembers her. Too bad, too bad. She used to be a decent hell counter in the novice. She used to be really strong. But with Li Yan's existence, Arch is no longer needed in any team at all. The reason why is Li Yan can hit front as well. You just need to use Serubia. Alright, Serubia combo with Li Yan is gonna give you a much higher output damage than an Arch will ever give you. Which is why having Li Yan makes more sense. So if there's no supporter that can modify an attacker's range to the far back, but Serubia exists and Serubia can modify any warriors range to the most front, which is why Li Yan is like so good right now. Like he's like, if you're a veteran player, go for him for sure. There's no debating here. All right, so the next one, we will have Rydal. Okay, so Rydal is a pretty decent unit actually. Uh, she can be used in all the particular stages in, I would feel like, I would say she's probably one of the most versatile as well besides Correct, where she can be used anywhere in the campaign, Evil Castle, etc, etc. The problem is, the problem, any of you figure out what the problem with Rydell is? What's the problem here? The problem is plus 15, yes. You're gonna need that investment. You're gonna need to plus uh, 15 her to benefit from her skill's full potential. Yeah, so most of the time, uh, to get that co extra companion is just not worth it. Even as a veteran player myself, I have not yet uh, tried to pour my resources into Rydal because you don't really need her. Like anyone else on this list is gonna be able to do what they can do. And I feel like Rydal is just outclassed by the next unit we're gonna cover, which is Viola. All right, so Vi, Viol, Violet? Wait, 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 what? Hold on, hold on a second. Violet? Alright, let me check out. Let me check. That can't be true. Wait, is Viola in the game though? Why did they change it to Violet? Will they change her name to Violet after the patch? I hope not. I like the name Viola. Alright, so Viola, I feel like she is a much better pick than Rydal. Alright, so a couple of reasons. Number one, if you get her, she's gonna be pretty decent right out of the box. Uh, that means at plus nine, Awaken, she's gonna be able to output a decent amount of damage and to kill tanks like Cecilia or Kauli, especially if they don't really have the buffs, Viola can actually do that. Like, I'm not even joking, her decomposition is just so OP. If you guys are not familiar, this skill basically deals damage based off max HP. Alright, so in a lot of cases, Viola is better than Rydal, I would say. So if you can plus 10 her, it will be even greater, but at plus 9, She's gonna be more than enough most of the time. And buff prohibition is just so good. Like Viola is like your best friend in trying to tackle some of the evil castle and campaign stages. In fact, I used to rely on her a lot. And I feel like till today, it's still going to be that case. Uh, especially there are one of those few specific stages where you need to basically just buff prohibit the uh, warriors in the back or defenders at the back to basically get three stars for this stage. And Viola is like a much needed investment, much much more than a, a rider would ever be. So if you ever want to consider like between the two who is like better right now, Viola is still better. Even after Rydal gets the plus 15, I feel like Viola is just still better. Alright, so next up we have Zakan. So this gets a little bit interesting. I wouldn't recommend going for Zakan if you are new. The reason is because if you are looking to basically have uh, a bombs in your team composition, I feel like Chalkle and Kewick is gonna be a much better option. So, couple of reasons why. 
if you guys are not familiar with Zakan, I basically have a Zakan right here. So Zakan deals fixed damage, just like Chalkel and Kiwik when he explodes. But Zakan has a little bit of a different requirement to using him. So number one, he cannot receive buff. Alright, so that's the thing. So remember, Zakan cannot receive buff. So no matter how, you cannot buff a Zakan and expect him to have high attack. So all his damage uh, in terms of the explosion and trying to counter attack an enemy is going to come from runes alone. So you need to have good runes. So for new players, uh, to invest in him is going to be a little bit hard. You need that runes. At least for Chalkel, uh, you can still buff Chalkel. Even with bad runes, you can still he can still receive buff. But Zakan cannot receive buff. Uh, same goes for Kiwik. Kiwik doesn't really need buff. Uh, he's more of a... It depends on his HP. So he can receive buff, but like it won't affect the explosion damage. Kiwik is also rune dependent. And I feel like Zakan is going to be a little bit harder to use for new players as well because of the taunt. Alright, so the taunt basically ma makes setting him up in an underground or in Guild Wars formation a little bit harder because if you don't place her far away, uh, he's gonna re redirect the attacks towards him, uh, especially if there's a Katarine or something, uh, that's going to mess up your formation most of the time. So with Chalkel, it's going to be much more safer, and being a Magician is much easier because you can chain the turn order and things whatnot. Alright, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. So Arch, as I mentioned earlier, if you really want a cross tile, I know some of you might be, oh, Arch is good, uh, her artwork, I like the lolly girl carrying the hammer, blah blah blah. Trust me, if you care about playing this game for a long time, go for Lian, you can pick Arch later for the artwork or whatever. Alright, so Orian. Now, Orian used to be really cool when Hell was a thing, but right now she's just... There won't be any usage for her, except for in the world boss arc star. Alright, if you ever use an Orian, it's going to be right there. And yes, you might need her to be high skill and high uh, level. I can understand that if you want the strat to work properly. But I feel like this is something that you have to work towards slowly. If you pick her right now, and you don't have like the remaining, the remaining core units needed in the strategy, it's not going to serve you uh, much of a purpose. So I wouldn't recommend Orian at all. She's only good in one thing, which is the Arc Star strategy for the world boss. Only one thing. So definitely not gonna be recommended for most players. A hard pass for sure. Okay, so Nia is an interesting one. And I know some of you guys will be like, why are you not recommending Nia Gitaro? Why? Why are you not doing it? Because Nia's the only one with plus 15 on this list. Why are you not recommending her to new players? The answer is simple. The answer lies in your heart. You know it, all right? Nia, yes, she has plus 15. But to be honest, to be honest, if you ever use a Nia for anything, it's just to get rid of Lucius. And you don't need a plus 15 for that. And even if you do, I'm not going to recommend her to new players because she's only good in one particular area. All right, whether you like it or not, some of you might argue with me, oh, Nia is good everywhere. Nia is good everywhere. Calm down, all right? Nia is not good everywhere. She's only good in Arena because she gets rid of Lucius. You don't see Nia in Nova's Arena, do you? Do you? Do you? You don't. You don't see Nia in Campaign. Do you? No, you don't. Do you see Nia in Evil Castle? Maybe, maybe. Alright. Do you see Nia in Guild Wars? Maybe, maybe. But most of the time, all of those areas, Corret can be a much better contender and cover those areas in a much more balanced fashion. So, I would say, go for Corret still. Don't bother about Nia, alright? I know some of you will be like, oh, she has plus 15, blah, blah, blah. She's a cat, blah, blah, blah. I like cat, blah, blah, blah. No, don't do it. Don't waste your time. And plus, I do think that with the upcoming uh, Rafitia, and I know some of you might have mentioned this before in my previous 5 Star Warriors video, right? So Rafitia is going to be a thing. She's going to provide some sort of reflective counter to the, uh, to your allies and things like that, all right? So Nia is going to die from that counter, whether you like it or not. Nia is a single target hero. Uh, Anastasia, on the other hand, yes, she might die as well, but Anastasia covers a big area. Nia does not. Nia only hits one single unit, and for her to die from that, I feel like it's a waste. Alright, at least 
if she has a big huge range then it's going to be a much easier recommend but right now uh 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 all right guys like if you have been playing the game for a while you don't have lian yet definitely go for lian like there's no argument right there and if you're new correct for sure all right so i would say right now viola is a strong uh, third option and i would say the rest i would rate them equally uh they won't serve much purpose okay so if you haven't already subscribed to the channel give this video a like i'll see you guys in the next one have a nice day goodbye